Don't you pray? Is your reward hell? Matthew 10, 28. Street priest believes in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one Godhead. I've taught on the Trinity, I've taught on the Godhead. Uh, I've used water as an analogy, water's one element with three different functions. You have solid, which is ice. You have uh, liquid water. And you have a gas, steam, all water. All manifest in different, with different, in different ways. How come the creator of water can't be three in one? Now, just as blasphemous to try to define God as it is to deny the Henry Drum. But the point I'm making, I'm giving you a basic analogy of the creator. Why can't he be three in one? Why is that so hard to believe? I mean, God is way more than I find out minds can perceive. Anyway, ain't no telling. I mean, it's just more vast than us, but I'm just giving you a basic premise to go by that. Christ Jesus believes in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one God here. 1 John 5, 12. This is all the beliefs of street priests, what we teach. Street priest teaches the resurrection of Christ Jesus. That was what fundamentally turned the world upside down, the Acts 2 church, teaching the resurrection. He's risen, we shall rise. That's another message. Give my teaching uh, things not taught on in the church no more. Oh, I can go on and on. The true gospel, get, get to all those videos. But I go down the whole list of things not taught in the church anymore. But the resurrection. He's risen, we shall rise. We did street priests have taught a lot on the resurrection. The cross, the resurrection all of it. Jesus said, bear your cross. Take up your cross and follow me. Cross only good to die on. Die to the world, the flesh, and the devil on this cross. That's something that's not taught anymore in the church world. The world's undefined the church. Instead of the church, Christ's church, defining what the world is and, and uh, abstain from it. The Bible said, many verses, be not of the world, love not the world. Come out of the world. From Christ to all the apostles. The cosmos, the way the world view things. Okay, the one Godhead. Street priest teaches the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead on the third day. He ascended into heaven and he gave some apostles. Now, this is for the Everybody now wants to be a self-anointed follower of himself. Don't need a, what Christ gave here. You either, you either one or the other. That's what I've taught for years. you either one of God's gift ministers out on point, doing what God ordained you, ordered you to do, or you a sheep. You're either a sheep or under shepherd. Taught this for years. We're under shepherds. We got to an answer to the chief shepherd, which is Christ. See that staff back there? That's the whack. You sheep, when you get out of the line, hook you, grab you back into the fold. Even to the point a shepherd would break the sheep's legs if it was a runaway sheep. You must have thrown them over his shoulder till he men and him. Do that. Do what you got to do. Paul said, "I come with a rod sometimes if I have to." That's the role of the shepherd. And also to beat a wolf's tail from trying to come into the and steal one of the flock away. So, <laughs> that's a weapon there for a wolf. We should be wolf hounds. Ooh, for Christ's name. Anyway. Chase away the wolves. Resurrection isn't taught anymore. Christ resurrected from the third on the third day and he ascended into heaven. And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, gift ministers, to perfect the saints, other shepherds. You can't perfect yourself. Sheep. You're either sheep, and, and you got too, this is the problem, you got too many self-anointed, self-appointed preachers behind these pool pits that are really sheep. 
God didn't call you. God didn't train you. I told you, look out for a person that's born with the Bible in the end is leaving out the, out the gate, can't wait to go into the ministry. That's probably the person I call. You look at the Bible, nobody wanted a job, including Wally. Nobody. <laughs> said, why me? What are you choosing me for? Some had to go through much suffering, like Job or Job. Job went through a lot of suffering himself, but some had to go through a lot of suffering. To finally bow down to God's will. I went through a lot. It took a lot to get me to sit here. That's why we reflected. <laughs> Been a long way. Come a long way, baby. <laughs> God and I are working it out. I didn't want this job either. Anyway, gift ministers. These are gift ministers. God's gift to the church. This is what He gave to whack you into a turkey. That's what they were, they're under shepherd. To whack the sheep into a turkey, into a turkey. Sheep are some dumb animals. They'll stray in a minute. I work with sheep. I don't run them off his farms. I don't even want to work with all the animals. So I've got a chance to study, I love animals. I've got a chance to study them from close and personal for a lot of years. They include my treks in the mountains. The mountain men love them. It's the camp up there every day. But you get to learn a lot about human nature from man. Jesus gave a lot of analogy, called people animals, called them foxes, pigs, called them wolves, snakes, <laughs> dogs. You learn a lot about animals. Some people got animal, animalistic nature. That's why I just said Christ called them. The, the Christ, the real Christ of history. I like Christ calling you a snake. Or calling you a the B word. It's a female a dog. Oh yeah. The real Christ in history is shocking. But to this uh crowd here, this uh honey dripping crowd, we're supposed to be salted to earth anyway. That's what we're looking for in street breeze. So, salty Christian. So, deep jerky. He ascended into heaven and gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfected of the saints to the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is two or three believers in together in my name. I'm in the midst. That's the church. Not a physical establishment, not a, definitely not a denomination. All that stuff is of, of Satan's kingdom. A body of believers. Two or three gathered in his name, four or five, say, you're, we're a church right now. You and I. When we're two, aren't we? If you just sit there by yourself. It isn't bound by space and time. <laughs> Even if it's on rerun. For the edifying of the body of Christ, street priest ministry believe that's uh, Ephesians 3, 10 through 12, in case you won't let me know. Street priest ministry believes in the gifts of the Spirit. We just don't show them off here. And a lot of that that's going on in them churches ain't of the Spirit of God, ain't the Spirit of Christ. Where the hell you act a fool like that? And that's a devil, that's the Spirit of the false prophet. New Age spirit, spirit of demons, with a lot of demonic, satanic pastors of the synagogue of Satan behind these pulpits. All you gotta do is go study Eastern Spiritism, Shinto sect, and stuff like that. You can tell the difference from that in the Pentecost. Satan can do. I have to take the same gifts that God, including the gospel, and the, the demonic tone. They do the same thing. And this is around the world. India is famous for that. And miracles too. Healing too. White magic. What about magic? White magic. Here. You can heal. Same to give you that gift. So a price tag attached to anything coming from Mr. Devil. Believe that. 
You open a Pandora's box with demons and come here to wreak havoc. You go to him for a gift. Street priest ministry believes in the gifts of the Spirit. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 9. And trains Christian soldiers in the art of spiritual warfare. That is one of my most important jobs that I take very serious. I told you here, this is a special forces of ministry, street priest. I was raised by a special forces family in the military. I don't think like the average Christian. All the training, the backside of the mountain, makes you for your ministry who you are. This is special forces ministry. And we take it to the devil. I don't want, I don't want the ordinary. I want the extraordinary. I said that to me, no. We're charging the devil. We're taking territory back from Satan. We're doing Christ's work, what he intended to do. That's what we're supposed to be. He's supposed to be a military. you got different levels in the military. If everybody was special forces, it wouldn't be special. But there's room for everybody. There's ministries for Cub Scouts. If you want to be a Cub Scout for Jesus, you got Cub Scout ministries for you. This ain't it. This ain't here for the, uh, no babies, no diapers, none of that. You got men, nursery ministries. You go find one of those. That's not that's not this church. This is for mature, salty, beef jerky, special forces Christians. It ain't looking to be. I ain't got a teeth for you to suck on. If, were, if I did, it'd be good powdered milk in it anyway. It's what we're looking for. We train Christian soldiers in the art of spiritual warfare against an eternal foe, Satan the devil. That's Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. So that's our report card. This is what we started out years ago. And we're sticking to the script. Now let me get into the sermon, which is going to be brief. But I just wanted to do that. That was the, the B-Day message for Street Priest, our report card. See where we're at, man. We're still on point, thank God. He's kept us on point. And we're still on point. We haven't deviated. 2,000 hours of teaching, we're still doing the same thing. We're still on the war field, on the battlefield. My, I got a battlefield series of teaching. I got a Sergeant Salt series of teaching. I got a Time versus Eternity series of teaching. We can go on and on. Look all that up. We're training soldiers to take it to the devil. That's what we're training here at Street Group. We haven't deviated. So that's that's our report card. Now the Good Samaritan, this is my, this is my uh, birthday message now to make me feel happy. Talk about, I'm going to get into a little bit of the teaching. But this is what sparked this message. There's different things that spark a message with Brother Jay. Sometimes it could be uh, something a jackass did on social media. Whether it be one of these these fake, fake preachers or fake Christians. Or it could be somebody on my social media. So I, I done did some major blowtorch messages from that. Jackass is no longer, I gave him the boot, I'll kick you through the, give you the boot through the uprights, <coughs> the uprights in a minute. Act up the street priest. This is a ministry that believes and practices. Weed out those that cause contention and hunger. I'm going to kick out a lot of the self anointed with my teaching. Oh, oh you would love. <laughs> if I could think of these, if I could think of like three three videos where acts laid to the tree is one of them. Um, but I'm trying to think of the real one that's. There was one of the hallmark ones where I'm really let loose. I'm even cursing. I, I uh, allowed or I warned the parents before I even started that I was going to let loose and curse to get the children out the room. And I wish I could think of that video. It'll come to me in a minute. But that one was a major one. When I had these uh, self-anointed jackasses coming trying to steal 
from the flock of Street Bridge Ministry. I have told you, man, say, get out on point, build your own. If you feel God to call him, come in here, try to usurp Street Bridge Ministry. Then we try to get through the booth through the upright. March and keep your mouth shut. This <laughs> ain't no one got to bring it to me. Just march and keep your mouth shut. That's one. No, no kids can listen to that one. But that's one I cut loose. But like I said, individuals have sparked messages. And is it is is it two individuals that sparked this this good Samaritan message right now? Two friends of mine actually. He's a personal friend, not social media bunch. First, I take that a lot of that bunch with a grain of salt anyway. <laughs> But these are these are personal friends of mine. My birthday was this weekend. I said I'm gonna celebrate my birthday over the weekend. And you know me, I'm you know I'm uh, I don't do the club thing, none of that stuff anymore. I'm burnt out and all that stuff. The guy that gave me just turned me on. I don't gamble. I don't do none of that stuff. I'm in Sin City. I don't do none of that. So me going, you know, nature. Mountains, some fishing, some you know, nature stuff, or hiking, biking, and going to a nice restaurant. But I go to restaurants usually hole in the walls, and they're usually friends of mine I've been going to and know very well, in particular with my food. So both these friends of mine, uh, two different ethnicities, both own restaurants, both are frequent a lot, spend a lot of money there. And this is what sparked this message, the Good Samaritan. The one friend I go to first, the first, you know, like I said, the weekend, I, two different days. I said, we're going to go to Fred's restaurant. I told him, hey, Fred. I mean, he knows me. I said, it's my birthday. I'm just, you know, uh, I'm celebrating this weekend. It's not my physical, but I'm celebrating this weekend. It's coming up. That's all I said. So I sit down, order my food. He brings it to me, and uh, at the end, I pay. You know, I ordered what I wanted. It's very good. He's, he's a good cook, but I pay. Now this guy is Mr. Christian. The reason I'm telling you this story. This is Mr. Christian here. He even occasionally watched Street Priest. He has a church he does attend, but he did occasionally. He's had. Now he has a television within his uh, restaurant where he has Christian television on sometimes. So he's like a Christian Christian. You know, his background's kind of rough, come from prison, God bless him. He's doing, he's got a very successful restaurant, he's doing well. And like I said, he's a friend of mine. So this friend, you would think on my birthday, now this is me. No, I'm one, I, I ain't a slouch, I ain't, I'm one to pay it that way, that's not the point. But the point I'm making, if it, the role was reversed, I said, oh man, I got you, don't worry, I, it's on me, and happy birthday to you. That would be me, this is for the Christian, we're both Christians now. This man, you know, he wears his t-shirts, I mean, he's Christian, Christian. No, he charges me that not even a discount. On my birthday. Hey, brother, I'm going to give you a discount. Charge me the full price. It paid like almost 30 bucks, but that's, no, you know, that's here and there. But the point I'm making, I go to another friend's restaurant the next day. Now, this friend is not a Christian. But this friend was raised in, in the Islamic persuasion. Not necessarily saying he's a full, you know, blown practicing. But, you know, I've been, God has been using me to work with him, and he's I've been sharing Christ with him and everything. He's coming along. But the point I'm making, he's not a practicing Christian. That's the point I want to make. I ordered from him, did the same thing, the exact same thing. Went to pay, because I really didn't expect for him to do what he did. Oh, no, I wouldn't take your money on your birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Brother Jay. He gives me. Almost the same equivalent amount of money for the food. Don't get me wrong. For free. I said, you sure? I even tested. I said, here. I had the money in my hand. He said, no. He put his hand out. No. I don't want your money. Happy birthday. 
And this sparked this message to go to me. <laughs> That's why we don't go with, like I said, I don't take up a lot of time with the B-Day report card for Street Priest. It's Street Priest's birthday, too. But it's my birthday, guys. I did Street Priest. So, uh, let's go to uh, Luke 10, 30, 36. Now, I have taught on the Good Samaritan before. Um, more than once. I think two or three times. Including the communion, I believe. I'm not sure, but I think so. But like I said, a facet has a diamond has different facets. So we're going to cover just to me a heart of Christ. That's what I'm going to kind of get at for those that's professing Christ but don't have a heart of Christ and isn't practicing brotherly or sisterly love in Christ. Now this man. Who would be equivalent to a pagan? That's what I look at. Islam is anyway. It's a moon god, pagan religion. The actual moon god, of Canaanite, uh, that's where it comes from. Allah is a pagan moon god. The god of war and terrorism and violence. But anyway, here's a man coming from that. <laughs> and given if he knows I'm a Korean, all he knows. He knows me very well. He knows what I wear what I am on my sleeve. I don't call me no hypocrite. So he knows that, I'm, like I said, he's been leaning toward Christ, listening to him. God bless him. But he showed more Christ in him than my so called brother that's been a Christian for years, running around. Professing Christ. But greedy. But gain. Selfish. Luke 10 30. And it made and it sparked this message. It came right, I mean the Holy Spirit just this is what you're gonna teach them. And I'm teaching early. Normally I don't, almost to the last minute with the teaching, wrestling with it, and then God will reveal it in my spirit, usually through prayer. I told you a lot of my messages, you can follow through, you know, a lot of my messages come doing in the prayer closet, in the closet in there. You just have to pray in every closet and pray. You just stand out in the public and do it. But the point I'm making, in the prayer closet, Usually I get revelation for whatever message God wants me to lay on the fly. But this came instantly, <laughs> early. And I wasn't even going to teach him my birthday, but God laid it on my whole, the Holy Spirit, laid it on me to tell him, no, this is the message we want. Because that so offended me. Now, well, I know it offended a God. It was definitely offended me. Like I said, it wasn't... The point that I didn't have the money, nothing like that. It's just, a heart, we talking about a heart of Christ. You know, feeding the homeless, doing things, and you're not sounding the trumpet before you. You're doing it for God. I've been doing this stuff for years. And like I said, the roles were reversed. I would have gave them, man. I said, here. Happy birthday to you, man. No, your money's no good. I would have gave him extra. If you want cake, you want. This is what happened at my, my other friend's restaurant. That's a bag. <laughs> so that, that really made me think. And I, that's why I just read to you about Christ said, go out into the streets and grab the ordinary, the sinners, the wolves, the, the violent criminals. We'll fill the heaven with them. It's about a heart toward God. And not about religion. After these things, the Lord, oh, boy, this is Luke chapter 10, we're reading the Good Samaritan. Oh, let me go to, let me go to verse 30, I'm sorry. Luke 10, 30. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho 
and fell among thieves. Now Jericho was a dangerous road. Some you definitely don't want to travel on at night like you got streets in the hood or places. If you get robbed, that's your fault. Everybody, they're notorious for robbing, raping, whatever the case may be. And you know not to go there at a certain time or not to go there, period. Or it could be a game banging thing. You got the wrong color on or something, you get shot. <laughs> So, this is that scenario. This man is probably naive, I would guess. Naive. Now, this typifies us, this, this parable. That's not the point. I mean, if you want to get that, I've been taught on that. Parallel, parallel in us as sinners. Being victimized by Satan as a thief and a robber. That's, but this is something different I'm going at. Different angle. But anyway. Get that teaching that I taught on that already to get some married to two or three different times. A certain man went down to Jerusalem to Jericho. Now he was it was his fault. He was naive, he shouldn't have been on that road. And fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, took his clothes. So he had some obviously some fancy clothes. I mean in some hoods they'll steal you, you got some nice uh, sneakers or something, they'll take those. You know, Jackie for your shoe, Jackie for your gear. What happened here? You got Jack for his gear. And he fell among thieves while, and they stripped him of his ring. And wounded him. That's really, that's really bad. Bad enough just to take a man's clothes. But then you're going to physically assault him on top of him? That usually happens. And dangerous. I wouldn't, in a way, I'd be caught in Chicago in certain neighborhoods with some nice gear on. I'm just telling you, you know. This gear, I'll be asking for it. That's what this is saying here. So anyway, you're asking for it. Stripped him of his raiment. He was dressed real well. That's how they robbed you. You know, you got money. You look like well. You know, thieves size you up. See, you got these jewels on. You know, look, look at your shoes. Like, you, know, you look like a bum. They ain't interested in <laughs> They size you up. And they entered him, wounded him, and departed, leaving him for dead. So it was a grave injury, a grave wound or death. Not even something light, like you know, a black eye plus the lip. I mean, he might have been stabbed, cut. And the way I think he was stabbed, he was something... He was leaking, as they say in the hood. Blood was coming out of him. Leaving him for dead. The bleed out. So he probably was dead. And by chance, there came down, by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. Just happened to, the oh, eyes just happened to stumble across this man's path. Priest represents religion. Here comes religion. Like my friend in the restaurant, he represents religion. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. When I say friend, I mean associate. Let me rephrase it. I like friend, friend. You know, associate. He passed by on the other side. He said, oh, Looks like somebody's dying over there, and he went on the other side. I don't want to get close. I don't want blood to get on me. And likewise, the Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked. He looked on him. Now, this one stopped and gazed on him. Oh, yeah, he looks like he's still breathing. Okay, let me keep it moving. Man. And passed by on the other side, went around him. One went left on the left side of him, one went to the right side of him. Both went around him, laying there in the road. So picture this. He's laying in the road, blocking the road probably, or the path. His body's laying there. Put, put visual on it. One go around to the right, one go around to the left. 
But a certain Samaritan, now Samaritan, wasn't even a, known to be a friend. They were enemies with the Jews. They didn't mix. Samaritans were half Jew themselves, but the point is they were looked at like Heinz 57 or a mutt or something because of the mix. They weren't pure Jews. They were looked at it like heathen. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. A man not even of your tribe, a man not of your culture, a man that known to be at odds with, had compassion. He just seen a human being made in God's image, laying there, and had compassion. And went to him and bound him up, bound up his wound. Now this good Samaritan is Christ, obviously. This is the parable of Christ, what Christ did for us. Christ is outside the religious world, outside of the religious community. And he bound the wounds, pouring in oil, you said, well, the Holy Spirit and wine, medicine, murder, and set him on his own beast. He disinfected the wound, bound him up, and brought him to an inn, to a hotel. Put him up in a hotel, or excuse me, in a motel. Put him up in a motel and took care of him till he healed. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took two pence and gave them to the host and said to him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. That's the grace of Christ. Now he said for him to take care of him. 